PDP says it is ready for its national convention. On, on the sideline, former military head of state Ibrahim Badar Bangida keeps receiving guests from the party. The latest, Atiku Abubakar. Why is everyone visiting Mina? And the Securities and Exchange Commission as a financial market regulator is not new to scandals. This time, lawmakers want to probe of new corruption allegations seem to a conclusive end. And thanks for joining in, everyone. That is Politics Today Live on Channel's Television. I'm sure Joaquim Baloye in Lagos. Less than 48 hours to the National Convention of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. The chairman of the organizing committee for the event, Governor Ifani Okowa, says everything has been put in place to ensure a successful outing. That aside, from all indications, the party's big names are already looking beyond electing their executives on Saturday. Their eyes are obviously on 2019. Today, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar was in MENA to meet with former military president Ibrahim Baban Babangida. Yesterday, the Kiatika Committee Chairman Hamed Makarafi and the Convention Committee were also at a closed-door meeting with the former military ruler. Last month, Governor Wike also met with IBB in MENA. Now, do you remember when IBB had a popular nickname Maradona? Well, with a series of secret and closed-door meetings, it's safe to say the game is on. Now, let's get perspectives on this one. Political analyst, Claudio Gundamsi, joins us from the United Kingdom. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Gundamsi, for joining us on the program tonight. Uh, let's begin. What do you think or why do you think are the reasons why uh, Babangida is getting so much of... Uh, he's like a magnet in the, in, the, in the PDP now. Everybody seems to be consulting him. Uh, wh why do you think this is happening right now? Uh, thank you, Sharon. Babangida is a very grounded member of the PDP. He has been loyal to the party. He's been, he, he didn't leave, he didn't he, he come from the party. He's got a lot of um, loyalists, um, not just within the PDP, but across for, uh, the spectrum of political parties in Nigeria. So it makes sense that um, the heave of this convention, uh, a lot of the uh, gladiators and a lot of the contestants will be going to Babangida for support and uh, probably uh, endorsement. So uh, this is uh, quite an interesting one that should, we should look out for. Uh, Babangida holds a very important position within the PDP. Uh, beyond that, if you look at 2019, how relevant will the role of Babangida as a person be? Because if you see this kind of consultation, it then means that it must be a powerful force when it comes to the affairs of the PDP and perhaps who becomes uh, the, the, uh, the presidential candidate of the PDP. Looking at the fact that uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar is visiting him today, he does look like he's a magnet of a big force. Uh, first, you know, for those who understand Nigerian politics, what we play on election day are actually rehearsed before election. And the Nigerian political spectrum is, de is um, designed by different political interests. They are the puppeteers. We are just the puppets. It's what they've agreed on behind the scene that we end up playing on election, on the day of election. So uh, people like the ruling elite have a way of playing their games behind the scene. And Babangida is one of those important elements within the ruling elite. Uh, so it's, uh, if, if Atiku or any other candidate within the PDP want to make any headway, they look into people like Babangida, especially with the absence of the former president, Olusha Gwambasanjo, in, in the PDP. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is one of the ways politics is played in Nigeria, where there are behind the, the scene consultations and uh, all tradings that will be going on before the day of election. So if you're going to look at the PDP election on Saturday, there's always a behind-the-scenes agreement that would have been concluded before Election Day. Okay, so uh, uh, the president, Mohamed Buhari, uh, has been in Kano. He, I guess he's uh, perhaps uh, left now. He's uh, been on a two-day walking visit in Kano. And one of the things that have been said is that he has been endorsed by APC leaders and supporters in Kano for a second time, including uh, Ganduje, the governor of uh, Kano State, 
in this sense, there are talks about how he's being received, and there seems to be some confidence in the APC that with a kind of uh, uh, response or the kind of uh, 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 atmosphere that the president saw today, and what we are seeing on the other side in the PDP, would you say, game on? Yes, uh, Sharon, it is sad for Nigeria. It's a sad, it's a sad day for Nigerian democracy because this presidency is not going to be judged by performance. Uh, it's going to be judged by its cult following across the northern part of the country. Uh, and sadly, there are nobody, there is no one to beat him right now with all the candidates coming up. So uh, the election in 2019 is for Buhari to lose. But watch out for the political class. There are members within his own party that are not happy with him. So don't be surprised if they are also in late night meetings with uh, Atiku. It's going to be a race between Buhari and those who are not happy with him within his party, and then those who have declared their interests outside of this political party. But uh, it's still uh, a Buhari's election to lose in 2019. Uh, it is sad for Nigeria because we don't have a strong opposition that is based on ideology based on the principle of campaigning on what they can deliver for Nigeria. So the difference between the APC and PDP is just in those letters, APC, PDP. It's more of uh, the same party uh, in different uh, colorations. Kaudi, uh, take a look at this. Uh, there are some concerns even within the PDP, and this is where you think, oh, the, um, there should be a, a stronger position for the APC come 2019, especially when you see an article go into leaving the APC back into his former party, the PDP. But look at the concern. One, a senator uh, of the PDP has re, uh, issued a statement today, and he's saying that the PDP should be weary and should look out for... Uh, the aspirants, especially those who are gunning for the position of uh, the chairman of the party, and here was Senator Bruji Kashamu uh, said in a statement this evening. He said, and I quote, while it is true that an accused is presumed innocent unto proven guilty, our great party cannot afford to close its eyes to this potential threat. It is a no-brainer that if a national chairman with a corruption case is elected, the party will literally be put on trial with him. This is one avoidable risk that is too much to take. You can be sure that a corruption trial of the national chairman of an opposition party will come with a lot of bad publicity that will sound the death knee the PDP, the party. End of quote. That's Senator Buduchi Kashem. Do you see, uh, and he did mention two out of the eight that are in these, uh, uh, f that, that he says fit in into this description. Do you think that is a major threat for the PDP ahead of their convention on Saturday? Shemu, is it not funny? Is it not funny that in Nigeria, Senator Kashamu that is uh, that he needs to visit the United States of America on cases that are pending, uh, is talking about uh, the character of uh, potential chairmen of his party that also have, uh, in his own words, questionable character. That is how low the. Uh, our political party politics in Nigeria has gone into. It's, it's so sad. The smaller parties don't have the kind of power, the kind of money, the kind of resources to mobilize Nigerians uh, on, on issues and politics. So uh, uh, the, the, the election, the convention on Saturday on the part of the PDP is settled, actually. Uh, whatever people like Senator Kashamu says it just becomes irrelevant because they will sort everything out behind closed doors. And you're, what you're going to see on Saturday, and not just to the PDP, with the APC will be a charade that has been played behind the scene. Uh, the way forward is for us to uh, democratize our system, whereby honest people and good hard working people will find politics attractive. Kaede Ogunam is a political analyst. Many thanks for uh, your thoughts on the program tonight. Thank you, Shelby.